Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I am snowed in today, so I figured it was the perfect opportunity to do another painting video. Today's is part of the 10 minute watercolor series. And with this, feel free to follow along. It is in real time, or you can just sit back and watch whatever you prefer. Let's go ahead and jump right in. I did take a couple moments before actually starting the 10 minute timer to mix up a little bit of my color. So if you want to do that ahead of time, it will take a few more minutes, uh, not even a minute, <laughs> a few more seconds to kind of just do that. And if you've seen any of my other videos, I tend to start with an underdrawing or a very light sketch basically is what an underdrawing is as a guide so that I know my images are as proportionate as they can be and as close to the original as possible. However, with these 10 minute series, I have not been doing that. I have just been going ahead and referring to the reference image and painting. And of course the reference image, just like in all my other videos, is linked in the description. It's from unsplash.com have copyright free art on there which is fantastic but I also like to give credit to the photographer. So you probably can't tell quite yet just because I'm barely starting out but this will ultimately be a sort of abstract but with some amount of realism hopefully you'll be able to recognize it as a cardinal. So I am using cadmium red medium for the most part the color that I mixed up was a combination of cadmium red medium and cadmium red light. Cadmium red light tends to have more of an orangey hue to it, but I did wind up actually relying very heavily on just the cadmium red medium. I'm using a size 6 round brush, and it can come to, to, you know, a tip, not a very fine point, but it's helping me with some of those streaky feather type textures. And then just working, I'm not working with nearly as much water in this one. If you've seen the last 10 minute watercolor painting I did of sort of trees, foresty type scene, I used a lot more water. And at this point, I have a higher paint to water ratio, if that makes sense. So uh, the great thing about watercolor is if you use just a little bit of water to wet your paint and have more of the paint than it being really watered down, you'll get a thicker layer that you can lay down and it's also going to be a brighter vibrancy. Whereas when you really water down your paint, it's going to be more flowy, it's going to tend to uh, blend in with each other and it's going to be a much lighter color. Obviously in 10 minutes you're not going to have a huge amount of time so I was trying to balance the, you know, the accuracy of having some sort of shading on the beak versus getting too detailed and, and wanting it to be exactly accurate. Again, these 10 minute paintings, the whole point is to get you involved in a regular art practice. So you may, may not even end up with a piece that you're 100% happy with as far as like, yes, I would sell this or, ooh, I would, I would post this on my website if you happen to have a website or social media or wherever you share things like that. But it's, the point is the more you practice something, and I know this has been so overused, but it's true. Uh, practice makes perfect or not perfect because nothing can ever be perfect, but practice improves. Let's just say that. So the more you do something and the more you work at it, the better you'll get, the more you will enhance your skills. That's really just the whole point of this series, as well as letting it be something that is fun and enjoyable. Honestly, it's very easy to get caught up in some of those details, or if, if you happen to be maybe a little more perfectionistic, like I am, when when you do a piece and it doesn't turn out exactly the way you want that can that can be really disappointing and frustrating 
But when you only have 10 minutes, it really is a bit freeing because you're because you have the ability to think, okay, whatever comes out of this is what comes out of this. And you just sort of you just sort of go for it and, and just don't think too much. Uh, that is one thing I love about art. When you're really involved in it, it seems like time, everything else just falls away. So I hope that that's what happens for you and that you enjoy it. And if you're not enjoying it, you know, maybe take a step back, take a brain break or something, and then come back to it. I have the black that I'm using for the the black feathers around the face and the eye. And again, I have switched at this point, I switch back and forth between the size six and my size four round tip brush. That, that size four is just enough of a difference that it comes to a finer point. So I was able to fill in just a few more details on the eye as far as the shadowing. There's kind of a highlight in the eye And I have to apologize, I, the lighting in my studio, I just, some days I feel like it's just right and where it needs to be, and then other days not. Part of that is dependent upon how much actual natural light is coming into the room, and today's a pretty gray, <laughs> dreary day because of all the snow, but, you know, my, my overhead light sometimes creates a glare, so that's something that yeah, I'll have to play around with. So you are seeing some uh, glarish highlights in there that I'm, I apologize if that makes it hard to see. You will ultimately get to see the image at the end of how it turned out, and that will be a very accurate representation because I have a, a high quality flatbed scanner that does a great job of capturing the way the actual artwork looks. So apologies for that. Hopefully that doesn't detract from you being able to ultimately see kind of the main point of what happens. Here you can see how heavy I have the paint. There's so much paint on there, hardly any water at all. That's why it's almost giving you a little bit of that streaky type of effect. Of course, and then when I add more water, it, it becomes smoother. But that can be really fun to play around with watercolor so that you have a very high saturation and the, so the very bright chroma, essentially, see how red that is. And then uh, you also get some of that paintbrushy, streaky texture because the paint is, is so thick and dry that you, you see the way it lays on there rather than everything blending together. I'm using a bit of ultramarine blue and blending into the paint rather than pre-blending at this point so that we get some of those shadows and it creates almost a purpley type shadow which it's, it's kind of nice when you're working quickly to to sort of blend on the paper i do recommend for longer paintings especially with complex things like skin tones that you pre-mix at least a few of your colors so that they will be more accurate rather than just trying to mix on the paper or just use color straight from your palette and I went for the black because I'd been using black and I had meant to go for the Payne's Gray for this sort of like abstract fence type piece that, the, that our little cardinal is sitting on. So uh, that I decided to go fairly uh, loose and flowing, just like those typical watercolor washes. And then you see the little sort of uh, his feet, his toes and his little nails. So give you a sense that he is sitting on something. I'm going in there, adding a few more details, trying to fix up a little bit of the shading on the beak. Thankfully, by this point, that paint on the beak had completely dried also because it didn't have a ton of water in it so I was able to go back over with that new layer and ultimately when you're trying to achieve realism working in layers is uh, one of your greatest friends you just have to make sure you allow plenty of time in between each layer to dry otherwise all the colors just sort of blend and mix together and I realized I was coming up near the end I had about 30 seconds left I think to sign my signature and sometimes I can take a little longer than I would like because 
Again, you have to find that right balance of paint and water. If it's too watery, then it's going to get really thick lettering. And if it's too much paint and dry, too dry, your, your paintbrushes just kind of drag across and not actually get paint on the page. So you have to find a happy balance there. You can see right there, I sort of ran out of color and had to, had to go back to the palette. So it's really right about here after finishing the signature. That is 10 minutes done with the painting. I did work about for five more minutes. I'm not showing all of that. You can see I sort of rounded out the body of the bird a little more, but I did want to show that I added some splatter and I didn't use a toothbrush like I've done on, uh, like I've shown in one of my tips and tricks videos just because I wanted to work quickly, but uh, I have the, my little brush that get plenty of water, plenty of paint and just flick it across your finger. And that is the end result. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you did wind up enjoying what you saw, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. I would be super grateful. Until the next one, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. God bless, and I'll see you soon.